If you are looking for a mobile wallet to hold and access your crypto, you need to go to Argent.xyz and download their smart contract wallet app right onto your Android or iOS device. Argent is the most secure way to hold money on your device while still being able to access DeFi services that we all know and love on Ethereum. Through Argent, you have one tap access to the beloved DeFi apps like Compound, Uniswap, Aave, and you can even invest directly into some yield generating assets right from your Argent wallet. Crucial to maintaining security over your assets is Argent's Guardian service, which, which allows you to use a friend to make sure that you can always restore access to your funds in case you were to ever lose your phone or for your device to break. You can also use a local hardware wallet to ensure that you can always restore access to your funds yourself. One of Argent's newest features is their ability to route trades through 10 decentralized exchanges, including Uniswap and Kyber, to make sure that you are always getting the best trade on your assets. Similarly, pushing the fold on what we can do in Ethereum and DeFi, Argent has replicated some of the legacy financial services that you would expect from your bank, but put it directly into the hands of the user, such as send limits and whitelisted accounts, ensuring that if anyone were to be able to access your funds in your Argent wallet, they could only send up to a certain amount and only be able to send them to approved addresses, which is creating one of the most safe environments to hold your assets in, which is why people have put millions and millions of dollars in into the Argent wallet that they use on their device. In order to see the Argent wallet in action, go to argent.link slash bankless and download the Argent wallet on iOS or Android today. We're also brought to you by Monolith. Monolith is your cool new DeFi account, your DeFi savings account, your DeFi checking account. Except the cool thing about the Monolith DeFi account is that it gets software updates, right? You actually get to increase the usefulness of this over time. So here are some of the features. Monolith is a smart contract wallet with a lot of the features that you would expect if you've come to know DeFi and what it is, you can you can add money to it. You can put that money to work uh, in Compound and, and accessing yield. Uh, but you can and you can also swap through Uniswap. What was cool with Monolith is that they will send you a very sexy Monolith Visa card that connects to your smart Monolith smart contract wallet on Ethereum. So it's a really awesome tool to live a bankless life with a a, a savings account that gets software updates. So this is, this is something that you're never going to find out in the real world, but you can still do real world things with you know real money in, like buy your groceries. So that's just fantastic. Coming soon to Monolith, actually already here to Monolith, is now you can buy DAI and get it sent to your wallet directly, right? So it's also being an on-ramp. So you don't have to go through your centralized exchange like Coinbase or Gemini or wherever. You can just go straight from your bank account right into your Monolith checking account smart contract wallet. So check them out at monolith.xyz. Hello, Bankless Nation. Welcome to another community. Ask me anything. This is an AMA. This is your opportunity to ask some of the most interesting projects some of the most interesting people in crypto questions that you have always wanted answered. So to ask a question, type it into YouTube. If you are a Bankless member, you can type it into uh, the Inner Circle Discord and we will prioritize those things. David and I, throughout this conversation, will do our best to field your questions to our two guests today. And with that, I want to introduce our guests today. This is part of the team at Zapper. So Zapper, is a DeFi interface. It is kind of a, a bankless bank interface and you can do tons of things with it. It's a fantastic tool. We recommend it all the time. I have Seb Audette, who is the founder of Zapper and I have Travis Blaine, but you probably know him as DeFi Dad. We just call him Dad. The, we <laughs> dad, just, yeah. Dave calls him Dad. Uh, I'm not quite comfortable with that yet, but <laughs> I, I, DeFi Dad's okay with me. And he is the uh, COO of Zapper. Um, huge contributor to the DeFi space as well. Uh, gentlemen, how are you doing today? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. That was a pretty good intro. Um, yeah, Thanks. we're doing pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us, guys. Yeah, I, Ryan just makes everything sound exciting. Like, we were here <laughs> talking a few minutes, and and then, like, the cameras turn on. It's like, hey, everybody, welcome to the... <laughs> <laughs> My kids say I have a podcast voice, and it's totally different, so oof, whatever. Oh, um, all right, let's start with this question. So we're going to field some questions for the community, but I think we just want to get um, a base. So there are people out there that... Uh, haven't used Zapper yet, believe it or not. Even people in the bankless community may have not used Zapper yet. 
Gentlemen, what does Zapper do? Yeah, so um, Zapper helps you uh, understand your portfolio uh, first. So say you do a ton of different investments in DeFi, um, you know, you're playing with a bunch of different protocols. Um, you know, Zapper helps you bring all that information and put it in one interface. Um, so that's the first thing. Then the second part is actually, you know, being able to manage your funds. Um, so we help people go into Uniswap pools, balancer pools, um, and reduce the friction around um, doing those transactions. So instead of doing, you know, a couple of transactions to enter a Uniswap pool, you could do it you know, with one transaction on Zapper, which we call uh, a Zap. It's brilliant. Like using Zap as a verb, which means you get mm -hmm. to like do something really cool in DeFi. You Zap into into something. And I, I guess, Travis, I would love your perspective on this too. Um, like, so what what is the the end game for, for Zapper? What are you guys trying to do? Is this like a an interface uh, for all things DeFi, all the money verbs as we call them on Bankless? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I, I think the like the high level like mission is to, to make DeFi easy for everyone. And so, uh, by the way, too, I don't know if we're able to share screens like I feel like. Yes, we are. There are a screen if anyone's ever not seen it. But yeah, the goal is to allow you to track your DeFi portfolio and then to be able to have the same access uh, as others who might be more sophisticated in DeFi and be able to uh, navigate all the different platforms and all the different strategies. By creating a Zap, we in many cases consolidate, could be like three to seven transactions into one or two. And so it saves them time, it saves them money, it saves them effort. But I think like more than anything, it, it's, uh, you know, it's like really doing what a lot of FinTech has done where you know, you take away all of the friction points. Robinhood's incredible because you can go on and you can trade, uh, you know, with uh, nothing to stop you from putting in as much money as you want into whatever stocks and there's no fees. And I, I think similarly, we're we're just trying to enable that that sort of access through DeFi. And important to note, uh, you guys never take custody of assets, right? So it's mm -hmm. basically a, a bring your own wallet, bring your own private keys, plug it in, and you get this entire interface. You could plug in a MetaMask, you can plug in your, your Ledger account, Wallet Connect, whatever you're using, right? Yeah, exactly. We don't uh, custody any users' funds. You, we're just this, you know, way to plug into DeFi. So First, super cool. I've got my screen up here. Is this, can you see? Yep. Mm-hmm. to uh, earn yield or do some yield farming. And then you can see here even a breakdown of different platforms that I would have money in here. So like I have uh, some money, some stable coins in Barnbridge that's uh, earning me bond. And so that $3,000 of value here is staked there. The other side of the coin though is uh, to be able to use a zap. And so this is where I could look for a liquidity pool, let's say with, uh, let's say USDC, I've got the one here for Uniswap, and I can just add liquidity by using one of the tokens that's actually in the pool, like USDC or Ether, but I can also use the most liquid uh, stable coins and tokens in DeFi, like DAI, Tether, uh, Link, Wrapped Bitcoin. And so at the end of the day, what's happening here is if I were to go in with, let's say Tether, uh, Zapper will swap out my tether. It'll split it 50 50 into USDC and ether. And so this is uh, this is a lot of manual work that all of us had gotten used to over the last few years that's been consolidated now into an automated money software. And then the last piece of the puzzle is just uh, uh, the fact that we offer a DEX aggregator. This is what matcha is uh, by 0x. Uh, that DEX aggregator, their API is what powers this uh, exchange. So if you like Matcha, uh, if you feel like you're getting the best rates and the least amount of slippage there, you can actually trade within Zapper now um, using the power of, of the 0x API. 
So, Dad and Dad and Seb, uh, we, previous uh, Zapper is a previous sponsor of the Bankless Podcast. So, I guess full full disclosure there. But uh, the the way that I described it uh, in in the ad read was like, you know, the 2017 uh, uh, bull market was like characterized by like pulling out your blockfolio and just like refreshing it like all day, like all day, every single day. Uh, and you know th- that was that was fun times. Has Sorry. that changed? I, I've been doing that for three years now. I just, <laughs> oh, yeah, but now now I just go to Zapper and I just hit refresh, refresh, refresh. And like the, the difference between like Blockfolio and Zapper is that Zapper, you load up your wallets. And with Blockfolio, you have to like manually input your 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 trades, your assets. And, right. and especially with things like rebasing tokens, like that doesn't even work in Blockfolio these days. And so Zapper, it's it's like it's going directly to the source of what the data is. And you can, the best part about it is like you can have multiple wallets, right? And so I think this this next bull market is going to be characterized by just like refreshing Zapper over and over and over again. But that's just like only one half of the product. The other half of the product is what you were just explaining, Dad, where you were you were saying you can you can uh, access DeFi things in a more efficient route. Are, when you put those two pieces of Zapper together, is that the whole product, or is there other stuff as well? Um, so like we see Zapper, there's two aspects, right? There's the UI aspect. So there's, there's, there, there's the Zapper.fi, you know, the interface that everyone sees. But the other side of the product that isn't as well known is, you know, what's powering all these possibilities through those transactions. So it's the UX part, right? Um, and that's a part of the pro- product that, you know, we're working to gear towards more um, uh, de- developer audience. Uh, so basically could, you know, help us uh, build out new apps. Um, so, yeah, I mean, right now, the more well-known of the product is, you know, the Zapper.fi that everyone sees. But there's a, also another part, you know, which is in our, our docs where, you know, people could actually play with Zaps and build out uh, new variations of them. So cool. It's almost like a, uh, a Netscape, you know, a Netscape mm-hmm. for seeing and being able to do something with all of the money Legos that are being built out on uh, on DeFi right there. So like that's an early internet analogy. Um, I, I also want to talk about another kind of early internet analogy, which is how um, you guys built Zapper. Like what's the story there? Because right, so you, you think about if somebody wants to start a fintech company on traditional banking, um, on the traditional banking stack, it is really damn hard, right? Like all of these APIs you have to plug into, all of these kind of regulatory requirements, all of these relationships you have to have. I think that's different when you're building on Ethereum, when you're building on DeFi. Because Seb, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys started as a hackathon project, right? Can you tell us the story of how Zapper was actually built? Yeah, absolutely. So Zapper's story is kind of like a, uh, interesting one where it came from two, you know, small side projects that got together. Um, so the first part was DeFi Zap, which was really the transactional aspect. Um, so you would go on the website and be able to enter a pool with one input. The other side was DeFi Snap, um, which was this um, pretty much what you see on Zapper today when you land on the, the front pages, being able to just track all your assets. Um, so I came uh, from the DeFi Snap side. Um, so perhaps I could tell a bit more of you know that that side of the story. Um, so yeah, during uh, fall, that's where I, I really started to you know look into DeFi, um, do a little bit of investments here and there. Um, and you know, at one point, it was just really hard to track my my own assets. Assets. So yeah, I had this crazy spreadsheet going, and it was <laughs> becoming really hard to maintain. Um, at one point, it was almost like, okay, well, building a web app that would do this would be easier to just maintain my spreadsheet. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I started DeFi Snap. And originally, it was just a very small use case. It was just uh, Synthetics and Uniswap, because those were the two projects I was using the most. So it was just something I built for myself. Um, and then, you know, just published a link on the, the Synthetics Discord in January. And from there, it really, you know, just had this this crazy snowball effect. And Wait, Seb, that was that January of this year, January twenty yeah. twenty. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I didn't realize it was it was it was that new. Wow. 
No, no, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, I mean, <laughs> last year to this day, I was, you know, I had another job uh, working at, at ShakePay uh, in Canada. So, yeah, it's crazy how fast all of this happened. And, um, you know, um, I think the, you know, in May 1st, we merged. Uh, so that was the official day that Zapper uh, was founded. And it was kind of like uh, being at the right place at the right time because we never saw yield farming, you know, exploding like you know i guess nobody really saw it and zapper was in a perf perfect uh, like place in the market to leverage that because uh, we help people go into pools and stake those assets so we were just like the yield for uh, farmers product and from there that's kind of like where we got all this this crazy traction less than a year small team built it didn't need to ask anyone's permission and it's already as powerful as it is now i think that's that's the story here seb i think this is a perfect time to ask uh the first community question um <laughs> I, i'm gonna ask this um this is from uh, an anonymous source it's not from david or i uh, <laughs> so let's talk about uh DeFi zap plus DeFi snap. So Seb, you were a main coder there and then Noder was the other coder. Who is the better coder between you guys? Is Seb better or is Noder better? Oh my, uh, well, so Nodar doesn't code, he, he codes a bit. Um, okay. So from the DeFi Zap side, there's Nodar and Suhail. Um, Suhail is a magician with smart contracts. Uh, so Suhail is definitely better than me on the smart contracts. <laughs> Nodar is more like this, you know, financial engineer. He has this, these really good ideas around, you know, building these new zaps. Um, and I'm more of like the, the front end. So I, like, I can't say who's the, the best coder per se. We all have kind of our own, our own uh, expertise. And you definitely have one of the best educators in the space, DeFi yep. Dad. Um, that, you know, fantastic pickup. DeFi Dad, when did you join the team? Gosh, I only joined, I think it was what, end of August or mid-August. So I, I had been using Zapper forever, like like all of us. And by forever, I mean for six months or whenever. It <laughs> <laughs> but I had also used DeFi Zaps back in November uh, when Nodar and Suhail uh, had launched around, it was like November, 2019. And that was, I mean, at that point, we were all so excited because DeFi was gaining traction and we were headed towards a billion in total value locked. And then along comes this idea of zaps, which to me was like, whoa, okay. So I no longer have to explain all these steps for one of my friends to get into a liquidity pool. I can just send them a link and just say, just follow this and deposit your money and it'll do all the, the hard stuff for you, uh, splitting your tokens and uh, creating the, the liquidity provision. Uh, so then when, when they combined forces, being able to track your portfolio plus zaps, it was like, all right, now this is like becoming like a hub for um, both newbies and sophisticated users. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I feel just really lucky. Like I, I was, you guys know, I was working at Consensus. I mostly focused on the Ethereal Summit and, uh, you know, I was spending all of my time creating a... Uh, tutorials and trying to educate on DeFi. So it made a lot of sense to work on a platform that is like an on-ramp for DeFi users. So yeah, been been since August and just uh, uh, it's it's been really, really fun. I mean, my I have a tough time shutting off from work right now. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for all those people that have watched my uh, Ether Triple Point Asset talk at Ethereal, you can thank DeFi Dad for that one. Uh, he's the one that, that got me up on that stage. So, so tip of the hat for that. You know what's interesting, David? Mm. Go back to Ethereal in Tel Aviv in 2019. So this was in the fall. Mm -hmm. It was, I think, September. And we had a stage dedicated to DeFi. We mm. called it the DeFi stage. Now, granted, DeFi already had like a pretty awesome community, like, you know, maybe like a few thousand that were paying close attention, a few hundred that were really like hyper involved. And man, I had so much pushback from so many people. Like, why are you dedicating all this time to this topic? And what's uh, this DeFi thing? <laughs> yeah, and that's great. Your talk on Ether as a triple triple point asset. We had a bunch of uh, folks like uh, Pull Together was really new as well. And, and Kyber Network had, was very well established. Um, actually, also like, you know, our, our, our uh, brothers from from Zerion, mm -hmm. they were there as well, talking about um, all the cool stuff they do tracking DeFi portfolios. So it was, um, you know, it's it was only a year ago, but it's nuts how 
so much of this now has become accepted truth to all of us that DeFi is here for the long run and that 15 billion in total value locked is nothing compared to where we're going. Yeah, that, that's where I met Layton from Pool Together and that's where that's where I met Tom from, from Delphi. And so like that was the hot stage. So like dad, yeah. like you've, you've been leading the charge with making sure that DeFi is in everyone's brains. Yeah, yeah, so, so much fun. So I mean, we've had a great year. It's been, mm -hmm. it's been exciting year. I do want to get back to uh, what, what Seb was talking about with, uh, so so there's the, the world of um, building smart contracts, right? But but Nodar is the financial engineer. And that's almost like a coder in of, the, in of themselves in the DeFi world. Like you need, you can't just have somebody who's good at solidity. You have to instruct them, okay, what are we going to do with all of this like financial, like all these financial like money Legos? You need an engine, literally an engineer to put all the Legos together and construct them in a, in a particular way. And what I see going on in the, in the background of Zapper is that you have uh, these financial engineers who I guess is, is Nodar and, I, and I'm sure there's others as well who are learning how to construct these money Legos into like actual structures that you turn into products on Zapper. Uh, Seb, can you talk about like the, the side of financial engineering and how important that is to Zapper? Yeah, I mean, it's a super important side because, you know, when, you know, building a smart contract, yeah, like you could be uh, like a smart contract ninja and know all the solidity, you know, tricks. But if you're missing all the financial context, then you can't really, you know, build a useful, you know, uh, smart contract within the application of DeFi. Um, so, you know, there's a whole side of, you know, building the smart contract, which is the whole, you know, financial context. Um, and that's definitely something that's very hard to do as, you know, a lot of like a lot of the, you know, exploits or, you know, hacks we've seen, they're not all, you know, smart contract bugs. A lot of them are smart contracts that didn't, you know, uh, think of all the economic context that was, you know, going around that smart contract, which is totally. super important to, to keep in mind when, when building. So yeah, that's a, a side that we're definitely very focused on because um, you, like, you can't just focus strictly on the code itself and not think of all these different moving parts. Um, I think, you know, I, I've read a lot about, I think Kane or another synthetics team uh, was talking about how their, you know, process for developing new smart contract changed as, you know, more synthetics pieces got um, not swallowed necessarily, but you know, plugged into other protocols. So that's a whole new side of things that you have to factor in. Got a question uh, that I want to throw in that is uh, fairly well upvoted in Discord and um, on YouTube from Corpy. So do you guys plan to have a token? And if the answer to that question is yes. Why is yes, the answer yes? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's assume that you know there's some optionality here. Uh, if the answer is yes, what would the token be used for is the question. Yeah, so I mean, that's always a tricky question to answer. Um, like, we kind of repositioned that whole question into thinking, what do we see, you know, Zapper being long term? And we see Zapper as being this community owned project. And the way we kind of tackle it is it, you know, we don't see Zapper, well, the core team being able to build, you know, all the Zaps at all the new protocol integrations, like we're seeing DeFi explode. Um, and, you know, it's hard for us to be able to track everything and add things. Uh, we also don't want to be in a position where we kind of, you know, decide which protocol to add. Like we don't want to be some sort of, you know, DeFi referee either. Um, so moving forward, uh, you know, we're trying to figure out what the best model is uh, to achieve that long-term vision. And, you know, if a token is the way we go there, then yeah, that's something We'll, we'll look into to doing for sure. Let's throw in another reader question here. So this is a question about um, your plans to expand beyond ETH to other blockchains. Any thoughts on that? So if you yeah. can answer that, yeah. Yeah, where does that fit into the product roadmap? It's definitely something yeah. we out for sure but but uh Seb, and yeah. you know maybe also include um layer two in that I, I suppose that's part of an eth offshoot but it is in a way it's another kind of blockchain yeah i think like right now we're definitely focused on ethereum that's where we believe most of the DeFi activity will come from but we're also like if we see um, a lot of activity going on other chains you know we 
definitely want to put aside our own beliefs in DeFi and focus on our users. Like what, like we basically want to help users participate in decentralized finance. And you know, if DeFi is going to be a multi-chain thing, then we'll definitely want to support uh, people across chains. Um, so far, we don't see um, that much, you know, um, I, not necessarily traction, but users, you know, asking us to integrate other chains. But that's something we're, you know, always keeping in mind. Is there is there anything of those chains, like anything kind of on your radar a little bit, like maybe in the uh, Cosmos ecosystem or in the Polkadot ecosystem that you're not like you haven't put to the to the front, but you're just monitoring and seeing how they how they emerge. Any interesting projects or ecosystems that you think are out there? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Pol Polkadot. There's a few side chains that are um, a pair of chains, sorry, that uh, are looking to integrate the EVM, so it'd be really interfaceable with Ethereum, which I find super interesting. So when that is actually launched, we could see some um, uh, some traction there. Um, other projects, I mean, we do see um, traction from Binance Smart Chain. Uh, we haven't really researched on it. We don't have, you know, any opinion so far on on that. But we do see some DeFi projects, specifically in Asia, tackling that market. Um, so it's definitely worth worth it for us to, you know, take a look and see see if there's possibilities there as well. Can I ask you about like? So it's something I've uh, struggled with. Neither of you guys can answer here. It's like, um, at what point? At at what point? does a base chain get to the point where we can no longer really call it DeFi, right? So if Coinbase had an EVM on a Coinbase like maintained ledger, right? And anyone could develop on it. Maybe you don't require Coinbase's permission. Is that DeFi? Is the Binance chain DeFi if it has hand-selected validators from Binance? Is Polkadot DeFi if it has governance in the hands of a small set of individuals? It's something that I personally like struggle with the definition of DeFi, which is why I think David and I have talked about before. Um, we like the term open finance a little bit better mm -hmm. because it sort of embraces all of them. And sometimes when we and I, I like we go with the meme DeFi, right? DeFi, DeFi. Mm -hmm. Of course, but it's not always decentralized. H how do you guys think about that? I, I can uh, chime in here. I I recognize that DeFi has become somewhat of a marketing term, but when I when I try to classify like what is DeFi, I think about am I one hundred percent in control of my funds? Uh, ideally, there should not be an admin key that can um, put my funds at risk. But then what I just said, I've clearly been forgiving with projects that are in the spectrum of moving towards being truly decentralized and uh, getting rid of some of those admin keys. Um, gosh, what else there? I, I think about, uh, of course, there being no middlemen, just the usual mm -hmm. stuff, like only inter interacting with smart contracts. And it's hard to ignore the fact that there's just all the momentum is on Ethereum right now. But... I think we as a team have been, uh, we definitely have a philosophy on the team of trying to be open to new ideas and curious about what's being built on other chains. And I, I think you guys have called them out already. We have, uh, we've definitely uh, been thinking and watching, I guess, like a Polkadot, Cosmos, uh, Binance Smart Chain. I think Binance Smart Chain comes up the most from, you know, we have a lot of uh, Zapper users in China and other parts of Asia. So we, re we really try to listen to them. We do every Friday, we do like an open forum and folks can just ask DeFi questions or give us feedback. So that's some of the feedback we've gotten. I, I will say this, uh, the, probably the lowest hanging fruit for us to integrate an another chain is Bitcoin. We could show the balance of Bitcoin in, in a Zapper portfolio um, hopefully in the future. We've actually gotten a lot of good feedback from our community saying, yes, I would love to see Bitcoin, just whatever I've got in a wallet, um, because frankly, you can't do anything else with Bitcoin. You can just see it in that wallet uh, if it's on the, the Bitcoin blockchain. So that would be really, um, I think, interesting. And I, I'm hoping that that's something that 
we can implement sooner versus I think the the more challenging endeavor of, of incorporating other smart contract blockchain. And, and that would be uh, native Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain rather than something like a wrapped BTC. That, that's right. That's that, that's what we're talking about. I, I even I don't think that we're looking at this now, but like I've definitely thought before, you know, I mean, maybe in the future um, for folks that are using like a centralized finance uh, service, you know, something like a BlockFi, if they've got, let's say, Bitcoin there, like maybe that's something we'll do. But like just um, I think like the, the key takeaway here is there is so much to support right now just in DeFi. It's so overwhelming. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and and I've, I think I have a fresh perspective as someone also who's not a developer. I like look at what Seb and the team does. The, the team is composed of uh, seven engineers and then two of us are not engineers. And I mean, it's just overwhelming. I don't know when Seb or the others sleep. It feels like we're just <laughs> always having to uh, support a, a new yield farming pool, a new token. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely exciting times. And Ryan, the way that you presented this question is like, well, is Polkadot DeFi? Is is like Binance Chain DeFi? Well, also we have like that same question natively on Ethereum, right? Like, are NFTs DeFi? Because like, who makes who makes the legitimacy of an NFT, right? Realty, tokenized real estate on Ethereum, is that DeFi? Like, you can use it as collateral, but the the house is like secured by a company, right? So there's this big spectrum of things that of questions that how do we even answer this question how do we even ask the question to begin with and when when the question turns to like okay if if it's if, if the the assumptions that i'm making that if if it's close to DeFi and the power and because of the power of ethereum ethereum can figure out how to latch on to it right like ethereum the way that anthony Cezano keeps on presenting ethereum is as this like economic nexus right and and uh, zapper is looking at the heart of that nexus and kind of growing out from there. It's like, okay, here's a token that everyone uses. Here's an app that everyone uses. Let's integrate that. And because of the power of Ethereum has the ability to like grow its arms, grow its tentacles into every single other chain via bridges, I think it's reasonable to like assume that at some point in the future, it's going to be able to like, you can query Ethereum to get a Bitcoin balance on the Bitcoin blockchain, right? Uh, and so you can actually go through Ethereum to Binance Chain, to the Coinbase rollup, to, you know, insert your bridge here. And you can use Ethereum as that economics hub to reach out to other blockchains and query data and create a zap around other blockchains that integrate with other blockchains as Ethereum becomes able to integrate with other blockchains. Because what Zapper really needs is data about other chains. And what Ethereum needs is data about other chains. And so if uh, these teams that are working on building out these bridges do their job correctly, to me, it seems to be that Zapper could just follow in the, the bridges that are built. Uh, I mean, I'm not very technical, but but Seb, does that resonate with you? Does that sound about right? Yeah, I mean, it does in a, in a, in a sense that that's kind of like, you know, what kind of, you know, is happening with Zapper where it started from a few, you know, tokens and then, you know, they got wrapped and then they are put in the pool and then that pool is put somewhere else. And, you know, it's just this, you know, it's just spreading. It's growing um, up from there, right. Exactly, exactly. I think you guys are going to be quite busy with layer two as well <laughs> when that, that comes up on Ethereum. All right, I want to get to another uh, YouTube question that go, goes off a little bit of what you're saying. And uh, the, the, the comment is first, I love Zapper but only a tiny fraction of my assets are visible on there. Wish there was a way to add my own assets and farms. Maybe there is, and I just don't know. So I think that goes to what you were saying earlier, DeFi Dad, is like, you guys are just trying to keep up with everything that's going on, right? And add features for all of the, you know, the, the money leggers that are going, that are happening. But there's going to be some that you haven't quite got to yet. And is there any customization ability for users coming down the pike? How do you think about that um, use case? Yeah, we've uh, we're actually starting to implement some, you know, a, a process where you know users will be able to add their own tokens. Um, as for like farms, it's always a bit tricky because um, you know we don't want to add stuff that could potentially be. Um, uh, dangerous or not vetted like we've seen so many you know rug pulls um and you know we're always very careful with you know the things we add uh, support for uh, on zapper 
Like Seb, uh, like something like sushi when it came out, what, like, did you add it right away or did you not? So we added the uh, ability to like view your balances, um, but transacting, like uh, we didn't add it yet. Um, so that's kind of like we had, you know, there's two sides. One is just being able to view their balance. So on that side, we're much less, you know, strict on whatever we add. On the transaction side, like we don't want people, you know, putting money into something that might be, you know, rug pulled in the future. So we're very careful, you know, with, with what we had. Uh, like for yield farming, um, you know, most of the contracts were all the same, you know, they were reused smart contracts. So a lot of these, you know, farms was, they were safe uh, to add because we knew, you know, those smart contracts and, you know, they were um, very uh, tested. A lot of money came through them. So yeah, we, we felt safe to, to add those. So we got a, uh, another question from from Callum from the YouTube. Thanks, Callum, for the question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Infura outage, and how did this affect Zapper? Any thoughts on solutions to these kinds of issues? Yeah, we did have a, a bit of downtime because of the Infura outage, um, but we uh, right now we have a strategy where we, we use you know multiple um, node as a service providers. So the first is, you know, Infura, and then we've been uh, using as a fallback uh, pocket, which is a decentralized node infrastructure uh, protocol. Um, and in the future, we see, you know, much more of that, you know, being brought uh, forward as a solution. Now, the thing is like um, these decentralized protocols um, aren't at the point where it's say as fast or reliable as an in Infura. Uh, like from Zapper standpoint, our goal is to have, you know, balances load as fast as possible. So that always, you know, factors in the, the decision uh, to choose the right infrastructure. Um, so right now, yeah, our strategy is, you know, we have some fallbacks uh, to different nodes, but long term, we do want to align with more of a decentralized, um, you know, node infrastructure. Yeah. So I guess a follow up on that, um, a lot of... There's been a lot of, uh, I guess, FUD out there about um, DeFi being centralized on Infura. Um, what's what's your take on that in general? Are there many node providers out there that like folks like your team can use, or is it a legitimate problem? I think it used to be uh, much more of a problem, but right now I, I think you know there's a lot of options out there. You know, there's Infura, there's Alchemy. Um, there's a quick node. Uh, it's also much easier to run your, your own node. Um, and there's more decentralized projects, you know, popping and, you know, uh, potentially this, you know, inferior outage will, will just create more market pressure into creating, um, these decentralized products. So I really don't see it as big of a problem as it used to. It's definitely like, it is, you know, something we have to, to look into because yeah, a lot of, you know, products went down during the Infura outage. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully it does create this, this market pressure. So with it, always, the, go ahead, dad. Right, guys. Oh, just saying, oh, there's always room for improvement. And, uh, you know, I think that was a, a, a bit of a scary thing yesterday. I actually, fortunately, wasn't awake. I like woke up and it had already been resolved, but I think that goes back to um, what's the term that I, I've heard you guys use it on your podcast, like anti-fragile. Anti-fragility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anti-fragility. Yeah. And so like I, anything that doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And I, I, um, I do feel like that was yet another thing that is um, not something to like brush under the rug, but also at the same time, like we're still here. Yep. You know, everything yeah. And I, I guess for folks that um, don't know about it, just real quick, right? So Infura provides a lot of um, like node services, Ethereum node services to applications, but also wallets, right? And they are a consensus project. Um, and, so and generally fam famously an attack vector from Bitcoiners who are like, oh, Ethereans don't run their own nodes and that's bad, blah, 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 blah. Right, right. Um, and uh, MetaMask runs on it and they had an outage because they were using a old version of a, um, an Ethereum client, Geth, uh, essentially. How long was that outage? Just a couple of hours. And it yeah. sort of sent DeFi into some tumult yesterday. So anyway, that's the TLDR on that. That also too, like those criticisms normally come from people who uh, push you to uh, put your crypto on Kraken, block buy. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yes. Like critical of the of of all the experimentation, and yet, um, you know, there's just so many folks that are so reliant upon that centralized uh, exchange infrastructure, and I, I just I I just don't get it. You know, we should all be we should all be pushing for these new innovations and thank God for the Ethereum community continually uh, pushing the envelope on this. So we have another question. I want to ask questions about uh, Ethereum staking and phase zero, but first I want to get to this question for, from YouTube uh, is another idea, totally degen perhaps, but would you yeah. allow devs to create strategies as zaps? Perhaps you can have a list of uh, zapper, a, a list which zapper the zapper team deems as safe and which ones are like wild. And that kind of makes me think of how like the Dune analytics boards have like community generated boards that you can go and check out. And that's a great way to just like put the, the ball in the community's court and saying like, here, here's a Dune analytics board that I use. Maybe you kind of find it useful too. Maybe that's something that you guys are thinking about. Like here's a zap that I use and maybe you can also use it as well. I'll yeah. just that's such a cool idea and we're we're aligned with trying to like make that it would be awesome. easier for folks to build zaps and and then in in some way or another i guess you could like maybe rank them like you were saying but so yeah I, what, what and, and by the way have you guys ever used that um program if if this then that it kind of yeah. reminds me of, of that idea right Absolutely. like where you have these modules you just kind of string together go ahead zeb no, yeah, that's that's like a, a great idea and something we're really, you know, looking into into building is like Zaps have a bunch of, you know, different blocks that, you know, are consistent across all our Zaps and people could just use, pick and choose from those and, you know, create a new Zap. Um, and then potentially the community could create all the, you know, uh, community generated Zaps and rank them. There could be like a safety um, metric, or you could see the volume that went through. Um, so yeah, that's that, that's definitely something we're uh, looking into. Okay, so with phase zero and the beacon chain uh, up and running and the deposit contract here, uh, is there anything coming out of the Zapper camp to kind of help facilitate this? So, so far, there's, uh, there aren't any plans. Um, we're still, our, our roadmap is filled with new protocol integrations, you know, you know these low hanging fruits. But um, I mean, if it's something that's heavily requested by users, we'll definitely, you know, look in, into it. That's kind of, our roadmap basically changes all the time. Um, you know, sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to work on the next week, or even like, just tomorrow, right? Something can happen. Maybe okay. Let's add this one then. Uh, so yeah, we always keep a pulse on you know what our our users are asking. I think that's yeah, wasn't it a week ago when whenever the deposit contract launched. I think someone on the team was looking into like how could we potentially in the future show like let's say you you deposit into that uh, the beacon chain uh, contract. The the uh, the talk was. Could we show that and support that? So I, I think uh, as Seb was saying, like we're normally just reacting as quickly as possible, but this seems like a pretty big deal. I mean, I, I would anticipate the, what the first deadline is December 1st and mm -hmm. then the other one's the 24th of December. So um, yeah, if, if folks are interested or just wanna like voice their support of that, which I'm sure there's like unending support for this, uh, you can hop into our Discord group uh, if you just go to zapper.fi, there's a link to go there. Uh, also, too, don't be afraid to, I'm going to regret this, don't be afraid to DM me on Twitter or Discord. <laughs> we always pass that along. Yeah. You know, and just, just to clarify, you can see your staked balances in the, the staking nice. contract. Nice. Yeah. It, what, what else? That's I didn't know that either. See? Yeah, there so there's so many things going on, you know. So awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have that. Know. Okay. <laughs> Good job, team. Is there anything about like the ETH2 roadmap that you guys are thinking about and like that's impacting the development of Zapper? Like how does how does ETH2 impact what you guys are doing at Zapper? Yeah, that's such a good question. And honestly, I have uh, like, I don't have, you know, any like immediate ideas about how we'll, we'll do it. There's so many, you know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, it's very nebulous. Um, I think a lot of devs um, and, uh, it, it, as we move more towards that, we'll, we'll you know, definitely look into how you know, Zapper interfaces with, with ETH2. 
So this is a question from uh, Jag Tapper, who is asking what the long-term game plan or roadmap is for Zapper. Uh, says zap, zapping is super convenient, but I'm sure you've got more ideas in mind. I, I feel like we've been talking about a lot of those ideas. So like take that question and also reframe it a little bit. We've been talking about um, Zapper as almost like a Netscape, right? Um, to all of these money Legos. And there was this, this moment in the early internet, people call it the Netscape moment, right? Where Netscape came out and people used it and they saw, wow, there's this in, entirely new digital world that's opening before us. And Netscape was sort of the, the, the browser into that. Um, when do you think, like, is DeFi going to ever have its, its Netscape moment? And if it does, how, how is Zapper going to be involved? What does it, what's it going to require to take DeFi mainstream? Hey guys, by the way, I've got to hop over to Yield TV. I just wanted to quickly say thank you. Seb's going to keep going here and Seb's the person you need to talk with more. He's got all the answers, but just thank you so much. This was um, really fun. And I, I always appreciate just what you guys are doing at Bankless. It's it's uh, the Lord's work in DeFi. So <laughs> Thanks, DeFi, Dad. So yeah, I'll catch you, you guys. See you later. Thanks for being here, Dad. Yeah, uh, Ryan, that's such an interesting question because, like, it's it's hard to say, like, if DeFi is going to have a Netscape moment like this, oh, my God, like, this is, this is amazing. Like, what we've seen so far is, you know, there's these moments in DeFi where, you know, like the yield farming craze, that was like a huge moment for DeFi where a lot of people came in and, you know, obviously some left, but a lot of them stayed. And, you know, what, you know, will that next big thing for DeFi be? Will it be like this, this Netscape type uh, moment? Um, I, I talk a lot about DeFi to my friends and see, you know, how, how DeFi can like tap into the market, which is, you know, exterior to crypto. Because if you just look at DeFi, right, it's still, you know, digging within the crypto market. It's, I don't see often people, you know, completely out of context of crypto hopping directly into DeFi. It's all crypto it's native still, right? Exactly, exactly. So like, do you refer as that Netscape moment where, you know, it goes outside of the crypto native space? Yeah, a bit more. I think that's the idea that there's this one moment where the world just becomes captured by DeFi and crypto and floods in. Yeah, I, hmm, man, that's, a, that's such a good question. Like, I think we still have ways to go to have uh, non-crypto people. Like, I think crypto still needs to be more, um, uh, perhaps like just in the back of people's uh, minds. Um, like, I think the current economic situation has brought a lot of that. Um, but like, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but yeah, I mean- It's getting to the point though with Zapper that normies can use this stuff, right? Yeah. So like, are your friends able, your non-crypto friends, are they able to use Zapper, but you're saying like, they just don't have the use cases that would just draw them into it at this point in time. Um, but or is the UX still a little too difficult? Yeah, I think it's a lot on like the information side. Like everyone, you know, can click around the buttons on Zapper, but like if the information makes absolutely no sense of them, you know, they're not gonna go through. There's a lot of like context to bring um, and, you know, a lot of financial education. Um, Cause you look at a lot of people using DeFi, um, a lot of them have a good background or some sort of background in finance. Um, but as DeFi is making it being easier and easier to use, you know, more of this is being abstracted away. And like, there's kind of, I see it in two ways. Like one is, you know, will DeFi just uh, reduce the information, information asymmetry and the uh, asymmetry and opportunity and, you know, more people would, will use it or will a lot of DeFi just be completely abstracted away? Uh, mm. Kind of, you know, more like a uh, really easy to use banking app you know, where you put money and then it earns yield for you. So it's going to be interesting, you know, what ways it's going to play in. Like at Zapper, our thesis was, is always like, we're not focusing on the market outside of Zapper. Like we see, um, you know, DeFi as this circle that keeps expanding and all the, where we want to be is at the edges. Cause that's where we, you know, we acquire new users and new customers and we're focused on, you know, that, 
ever expanding, um, you know, circle and look, looking to add features just at the edges of that circle. And eventually we see that, you know, blowing into, you know, a much more, you know, mainstream audience. Reminds me a lot of our conversation with Andre from, uh, from Wire and Protocol and how he said, like, I don't have a long-term plan. I'm just building the next great feature mm -hmm. and that's going to keep me busy. And as long as I'm doing that, we're making progress. So it, so it sounds similar. Maybe we're all in that camp. Well, how can you have a long-term plan in DeFi, in crypto, right? It's like we, no one saw yield farming coming and there's going to be something new in two months and no one's going to see that that coming either. It just feels like that that Wallace and Gromit gif where, where uh, I think Gromit is the on the train and he's just throwing the tracks in front of him, right? right as, <laughs> yeah. as, as he zooms forward. Yeah, that's definitely a day, uh, day at the office at Zapper. <laughs> Well, I mean, being able to, to be nimble and move quickly is really, really advantageous. And that's definitely what we see coming out of the Zapper camp. Uh, Seb, are you guys hiring? How can people help lay the tracks for, for Zapper? Yeah, I mean, we're always open to uh, get new people on board that, you know, believe in, in DeFi and our vision of Zapper of making DeFi easy to use. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we always have positions open, whatever the position, like we, we kind of have the philosophy for you come into Zapper and you create your own role. Mm. Um, and um, yeah, very open. Very cool. And so last question, just to wrap this up, how can the Bankless Nation help Zapper? Like what, what can Zapper do for the Bankless Nation and what can the Bankless Nation do for Zapper? Yeah, I mean, happy to get any type of feedback if there's things that Zapper is missing or types of functionalities. Uh, Happy to get any feedback. You can, you know, hop in our Discord. Uh, we're pretty active there, um, and you know, we uh, we have a really fast development cycle. So happy to to build anything that the Bankless Nation uh, requests. All right, Very cool. Zeb, thank you for being here, and also thanks to DeFi Dad who had to hop off. Uh, so yeah, guys, check them out, zapper.fi, load up your wallets, see what it shows you. I always like to, to tell the story of like when I loaded up my Zapper wallet, I found like $25 of liquidity <laughs> in Uniswap that I forgot that I had uh, been supplying. And so I was like, oh, like, it's nice. I found some found some money in a pocket that I didn't know I had. Um, so that's, that's always always a fun time. So Seb, thanks for, thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you very much. It was great. Thank you, David. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate Cheers. it. Take care. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.